A reading from the book of Sirach. Come to our aid, O God of the universe. Look upon us, show us the light of your mercies, and put all the nations in dread of you. Thus they will know, as we know, that there is no God but you, O Lord. Give new signs and work new wonders. Gather all the tribes of Jacob, that they may inherit the land as of old. Show mercy to the people called by your name, Israel, whom you named your firstborn. Take pity on your holy city Jerusalem, your dwelling place. Fill Zion with your majesty, your temple with your glory. Give evidence of your deeds of old. Fulfill the prophecies spoken in your name. Reward those who have hoped in you, and let your prophets be proved true. Hear the prayer of your servants, for you are ever gracious to your people, and lead us in the way of justice. Thus it will be known to the very ends of the earth that you are the eternal God. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm the response is, Show us, O Lord, the light of your kindness. Remember not against us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us, for we are brought very low. Show us, O Lord, the light of your kindness. Help us, O God our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. Show us, O Lord, the light of your kindness. Let the prisoners sighing come before you. With your great power free those doomed to death. Then we, your people and the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. Through all generations we will declare your praise. Show us, O Lord, the light of your kindness. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The disciples were on their way, going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. Taking the twelve aside again, he began to tell them what was going to happen to him. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him, spit upon him, scourge him, and put him to death. But after three days he will rise. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The chalice that I drink you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord What's the best investment you can make with your life? The Gospel presents us with a paradox, we lose what we keep, and we gain what we give away. 
when we lose our lives for Christ, we gain a priceless treasure and an inheritance which lasts forever. Whatever we give to God comes back a hundredfold. Generosity flows from a heart full of gratitude for the abundant mercy and grace which God grants. Do you give freely and generously? And why do you give, for reward or for love? Right after a wealthy young man refused to follow Jesus, Peter, somewhat crudely, wanted to know what he and the other disciples would get out of it since they had freely accepted Jesus' offer to follow him unconditionally. Jesus spoke with utter honesty, those who left all for him would receive a hundred times more now, even in this life, as well as unending life in the age to come. Jesus' disciples can expect opposition and persecution from those who are opposed to Christ and his gospel. Should we be surprised if we lose favor and experience ridicule, intimidation, and injury when we take a stand for truth and righteousness? In place of material wealth, Jesus promised his disciples the blessing and joy of rich fellowship with the community of believers. No earthly good or possession can rival the joy and bliss of knowing God and the peace and unity he grants to his disciples. The Lord wants to fill our hearts with the vision of heaven and with his joy and peace. Do you know the joy of following the Lord as his disciple? Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with the joy of the gospel and the knowledge of God's personal love. Lord I want to follow you as your disciple and to love you wholeheartedly with all that I have. Fill my heart with faith, hope, and love that I may always find peace and joy in your presence.